Hello class, welcome to basic science and technology class. Today we'll be treating the topic production of materials, clay and glass, with the team, materials and processing. Objective of lesson. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe the methods used in making clay and glass production and also understand the stages in clay and glass production. Before we go into clay and glass production proper, let's look at the introduction to clay and glass. What are clays? Clays, as we all know, is a type of soil. Clay are finely grained soil particles that contain clay minerals like silicon oxide and organic matters. Clay has plasticity behaviors when mixed with water, but when dry, becomes strong. That is the ability to behave like a plastic when mixed with water. Also, clays are impermeable to water, which makes it suitable for poultry making. That means they have the ability of holding water, not allowing water to pass through them. They have waterproof-like surfaces. Now, this is an example of clay, a finely great soil particle. Now, when it is mixed with water, you could see the plasticity behavior, and this shows the impermeable behavior of clay to water. Let's look at some stages involved in poetry making. When we talk about stages involved in poetry making, we are also referring to the stages involved in clay production because most clay production end up in poetry making. Now, what do we understand by poetry making? When we talk about stages involved in poetry making, we are also referring to stages involved in clay production because most clay productions end up in poetry making. Pottery making is the act of making things from clay materials. And most of these pottery materials made is vessels, jars, clay pots, sculptures. This is a good example of a pottery work. We have four different stages involved in clay production or pottery making, which is excavation, molding, firing, and lastly, decoration. Let's look at excavation of clay. From the word excavation, the first thing that comes to our mind is the use of excavators to dig out the earth surface. So in excavation of clay, which is the first stage of clay production, in this stage, the earth is usually dug up with the help of shovels or machines like excavators to recover clay deposits beneath the earth's surface. You can see this man making use of shovels and also this is an excavator used in digging out clay deposit beneath the earth's surface. After the clay is recovered, that is from the earth's surface, air bubbles and sand particles are removed and this makes the clay easily moldable. Let's look at the second stage of clay production, which is referred to as molding and firing of clay. In the stage of molding of clay, after you've recovered the clay beneath the earth surface, and you must have removed the air bubble so that it will be moldable, then there are different materials that could be used to mold this clay to our desired size and shape. Some of this material is our potter wheel, and also with the use of our finger to mold this clay into the required shape and size we want. After that, there is need for us to fire the clay. And that brings us to firing of clay. Firing of clay involves subjecting clay products into extreme heat. This stage helps clay to become hardened and durable. That is, after molding our clay material into our desired size and shape, it is proper for us to subject it into heat for it to become strong and maintain the shape which it is molded to. You can see that these clay products are being fired at extreme heat. This makes it hardened and what durable. The next stage 
of clay production is decoration of clay. After you must have molded it, fire the clay and brought it up, it is important that you decorate your vessel or poetry material that you've made into several designs or colors. Now, in decoration of clay, this is the final stage involved in clay production where materials like varnished or ceramic papers are used to draw out patterns on the surface of the clay, that is the clay product that you must have fired with the aim of beautifying it. You can see the two used here in drawing patterns on this clay product. You can see the design of this letter E and C on your several clay products that you are planning to design. You can see this beautified clay vessel. Let's look at glasses. Glasses mostly are formed when a mixture of sand, soda, and lime is heated at extreme temperature. How are glasses produced? When a mixture of sand, soda, and lime is heated in a furnace at a very high temperature, glass is produced. And these glass produced are classified into two major classes, which are translucent glasses and also transparent glasses. You can see this is a mixture of sand, soda, and lime, which is passed through a furnace for glass to be what produced. Let's look at a brief description of these various classes of glass. Translucent glass and transparent glass. Translucent glasses are sometimes called opaque glasses. These are glasses that allow little or no light to pass through them. That means you can't see through them completely. Transparent glasses are glasses that allow light to pass through them. That means for transparent glasses, you can easily see through them. You can see this is a transparent glass, this is a transparent glass, this is a translucent glass, this is a translucent glass. You can see through it completely. You can see from this, this is transparent, you can see completely, you can't see completely, it makes it a translucent glass and also an opaque glass is sometimes called your translucent glass, you can't see through it at all. Let's look at some types of glasses. Glasses are further divided into various types depending on their uses. Some types of glasses are 1. Safety glass. This is a type of glass used for making windscreen of automobiles like our cars, trucks and vehicles. Plate glass. This is a type of glass used for making windows and doors in buildings. You can see this is a good example of our safety glass that is used for making windscreen of automobiles. This is an example of our plate glass used for making windows of buildings. Let's look at reinforced glass. This kind of glass is made to resist fire and heat in fact. They are usually used to make glass containers. One thing about reinforced glass is that they are very thick and made in such a way that they can withstand fire and large amount of heat. You can see this is a reinforced glass and you can see how thick it is. Let's look at another type of glass which is bottle glass. This is the cheapest kind of glass used for making bottles. What are the stages involved in glass production? Glasses go through four basic stages for proper processing. These stages include crushing and mixing, annealing and polishing, heating, and lastly, forming. Let's look at the first stage, crushing and mixing. Solid materials like sand, soda, lime, potash, and lead oxide together with recycled glass are grounded into fine particles, then further filtered 
to remove any rough particle in the stage of crushing and mixing. This diagram shows the crushing and mixing stage of sand, soda, lime, potash and lead oxide. Now, this is the rough particles that have been removed during the crushing and mixing stage. The next stage in glass production is what we refer to as heating. When you hear the word heat, it means subjecting a particular thing to a very high temperature. Now, for glass production, after removing the rough particles, we subject it to heat. Now, the filtered particles are then heated at a temperature of 100 degree centigrade for four to seven hours. In this stage, heated particles turn into a plastic molten glass. The next stage after heating is what we call forming. In forming, when the particles have been melted into a molten state, it is then poured out to form a desired shape. From this diagram, you can see the desired shape formed by the molten state of the glass. The next stage is annealing and polishing. Annealing is a process of cooling glass slowly so that the molten glass crystallizes. There are basically two methods involved in glass production. We have our float glass method and also our glass blowing method. For float glass method, this is a method of forming molten hot glass into flat sheets by floating it on a bed of molten metal. For glass blowing method, this is the method of forcing air inside a mold shape according to a hollow geometrical object, e.g. glass, bottles or other containers. Let's take a brief summary of what we've learned so far. We say that clay are finely grained soil particles that contain clay minerals like silicon oxide and organic matters. We also say that excavation, firing, beautification and molding are the major stages involved in clay production. And also when a mixture of sand soda and lime is heated in a furnace at a very high temperature, glass is produced. Also, we looked at some stages involved in glass production, which includes crushing, polishing, heating, and forming. Let's take some questions. Question one, dash is a method used in processing clay. A, potter's wheel method. B. Annealing. C. Excavation. D. Float clay method. The correct option is B. Annealing. Question 2. Which of the following options is a stage involved in glass production? A. Decoration. B. Annealing and polishing. C. Molding. D. Smelting. The correct option is B, annealing and polishing. We've come to the end of this class and we've been able to see the various stages involved in clay and glass production. Thank you and see you in our next class.